Hi, I'm Ariel Peretz, and welcome again to another edition of our Successful Man Seminar. Our goal here is to reach a much higher level of success in all areas of our life, in our relationships, whether it be marriage or with other people, career, raising children, becoming happy, and truly growing closer to God. I'm not a career rabbi, I'm just a person who happened to chance upon a great treasure of teachings uh, from Rabbi Shalom Arush, whose teachings are taught here in this class, as well as those of other sages. And as a result of these uh, amazing teachings, I saw unbelievable miracles in my life. And because of that, I felt impelled to want to share those, class, those teachings with other people. And, and if you really do the, the work entailed in these uh, types of teachings, you're going to really see amazing changes in your life. These teachings are universal. They apply to any person of any religion, of any religious level, whether they be very holding on a very high level or not at all close to, to God from the point they're listening to these classes. As long as you believe that there is a creator who loves you and who wants the best for you, then you can achieve the full potential in your life and really internalize the beauty of these classes. I strongly recommend that you read the books of Rabbi Shalom Arush. Tonight we're going to spend our time on one particular book, which is called In Forest Fields. But of course, the other books, such as The Garden of Imuna, The Garden of Gratitude, The Garden of Peace, and others, are beautiful books that should really be a part of your uh, library. So, if I were to tell you that I have a formula for you to achieve success, to be able to have long-lasting happiness, to be able to have a beautiful relationship with your soulmate, a great relationship with your children, to have a life that is free from stress, from self-doubt and self-persecution, a life where you're going to be very content with the amount of money that you make in your career, and with all your relationships with the people around you, and where you have an optimistic view of every person around you, would you be willing to spend an hour a day to try to implement this formula into your life? Now, some people spend hours a day chasing other formulas that really lead them to a dead end. Now, I can tell you that this formula is not one that I came up with. It's not something that I designed. It's something that I've tried, and I'm going to tell you a story about how it really works. But it's something that has worked for literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, some of whom I've gotten to know myself. And it's something that has been practiced in the beginning of time. So this is what we're going to spend our evening on, which is about the unlimited power of talking to God. Some people call it prayer, some people call it other things, but it's really the ability to connect to God in a real meaningful way, but in a way that actually enables you to achieve your best potential in life. Now before we start talking about this unbelievable tool, which is really the tool that we've been talking about in each of our classes. In each of our classes, we're talking about how to achieve happiness. All of this really comes down to practicing this tool. Before I tell you about this tool, I want to tell you a little story about myself. A few years ago, I was at a very difficult intersection in my life. I started doubting pretty much a lot of things in my life. I started looking at my achievements. They didn't seem to be as much as I thought. I wasn't really happy with what I was accomplishing. I was starting to question things. In some ways, I was also starting to question whether God really gave me the best life that I should really deserve. I started looking around, and I was, I was a bit down. And this happens to a lot of people. It happens to a lot of us. 
that we're just not content with the situation we're in, but we can't seem to get ourselves out of it. And so while this was happening, I came up to speak to a friend who suggested that I speak to some, some rabbi about my life. Now this situation that I found myself in has actually turned out to be a great one. It's what is called a wake-up call. When you find yourself at this intersection where you're not sure that what you've been practicing in your life is really the right thing, this is actually a great thing that can cause you to change your life entirely and turn it upside down. So what I did was, I was, I was, uh, it was suggested to me by a friend to call, uh, to call what became my spiritual guide, Rabbi Lazer Brody, who is the translator of the books of Rabbi Arush in English. So I called, I called him, not having really knowledge of the books. I maybe read a couple pages here and there of one book, but that was about it. So I called him, and I told him about my life, and I shared with him um, the different things that I was not happy about. And he gave me a couple pointers. But the one big takeaway from all of this that left a real impression on me was that he said, if you really want to change your life, if you're really a seeker of truth, if you really want to change everything now, you go out there and you go speak to God for six hours. And then after that, I want you to spend an hour every day talking to God about whatever it is on your mind, whatever problems you're going through. And if you do that, I promise you, you're going to see some big changes. And that was it. A 20-minute conversation that climaxed with this conclusion, this takeaway, go and spend six hours talking to God. So, in the beginning, I said to myself, is this really something that you can do on a practical level? What can I possibly say to God for six hours? And how am I going to go on and go about it if I've never really done it? Now, I've spent probably 10 years prior to that using prayers from the prescribed book, a book of prayer. And in it, yes, I found moments where I spoke to God, but it was really little moments, maybe a couple seconds here and there, or maybe in my own private mind, in my thoughts, I would speak to God. But nothing like six hours, which seemed really intense. But I said to myself, what the heck? I've tried so many things. I've spoken to people. I've gone into the depths of myself, into my heart, into my soul, trying to find peace in myself. And it didn't work. Now this, this amazing human being told me, do this. And he seemed like he really was very sincere about it. So on a Sunday, in the summer, when the temperatures were soaring in the San Fernando Valley to the high 90s, I went out there and chose, an, uh, chose a park to spend six hours. I packed some grapes, a sandwich, water, and a notepad, and I headed into the woods. I went inside, found myself a spot, and I stood there for a few moments, looking around me, looking at the trees. Started looking up into the sky, and I started seeing the sun piercing through the trees. And I just said in my mind, I have to muster a way to speak to God. Of course I believed in God. But what, what am I going to tell Him? So a few moments passed by, and then I just started saying a couple words, started uttering a few sentences here and there, and before you know it, I started going through my entire life as much, as far back as I could about everything in my life that I felt I did wrong in, and the things that I was proud of, and I went through my early childhood, to my adolescence, to my young adulthood, and to my life, in, in that present time, 
I went through everything, my relationships with my parents, my relationship with my family, my wife, my children, and I found myself literally confessing to God everything that has been bottled up inside me for years. Now, I've never before that spoken to God in such an extensive manner, but I can tell you that in doing that, after six hours of doing that, and writing notes in my notepad, I felt a hundred pounds lighter in my heart and soul. I came out of this session feeling like an eagle soaring on top of a mountain. I felt that I turned a new page in my life. I felt what people called hope. I felt connected to God more than any other time in my life. And I had spent many years, I've read many books, gone to many inspiring speeches, met extremely holy people. And in all those times, maybe a spark here and there, but nothing very meaningful. I felt that God heard what I had to say. And I felt that help was on the way. I didn't exactly know what it was, but I felt happiness that I never experienced in years. From that day a few years ago, I never stopped talking to God ever on a daily basis. basis. Every day, I devote at least an hour or more talking to God. It doesn't matter if I had a hundred deadlines in my work, or if I had to tend to family matters till 11.30 at night, or if I had even three hours of sleep because I was away at some convention and kept me up all night. It didn't matter if I was away in business in some city. It doesn't matter if, if I didn't have any of the conveniences that I would need or the right temperament to do it. No matter, no matter what, rain or shine, I made sure and I make sure every day that I speak to God on a daily basis. Now why is that? The reason is that as a result of doing something that seems so simple, I was able to solve life issues that I carried with me for decades. I was able to fix character flaws that I've had since I was young. I was able to improve relationships with my family, with, with colleagues. I was able to increase the level of happiness that I had significantly. Now, I asked at the beginning, if I could give you a formula like that, that can transform your life like that, wouldn't you do it? Once I tasted that, I realized that the power of personal prayer, which is speaking to God in your own words, not with a text prayer book, which is also wonderful, is something that is the greatest gift that God gave to us. <coughs> so why is it that so many people don't do it? If it's such an elixir for happiness, if it is the cure-all for all our issues, for all the stress that we have in our life. The reason for that is because we all possess an evil inclination. We all possess this voice in the back of our heads that is telling us every day things to bring us down, to make us question ourselves, to not follow the right path that is going to lead to our real full potential in life. We have preconceived ideas that are limited to our intellect, they are limited to our emotions, but this is not what's going to give you happiness. What's going to give you happiness is when you summon the help of God every step of the way. When you literally are, when you believe in God, you believe that you have to pray for everything that you will want to attain in life. And this tool that we're going to discuss tonight is all about that. It's about developing a real connection with God, and that connection with God will connect you to your best self. So, 
talking to God is something that you can liken to talking to your best friend. You use your own words. You can do it in any language. You don't actually need even this class to develop a way to speak to God. But there's some very practical tips that we're going to discuss tonight that are tried and tested in the field and which will help you tr tremendously in this road of speaking to God. And if you talk to God in your own words, it will give you the best guarantee for mental and emotional health, for happiness, for spiritual growth and success in every aspect of your life. Not just spiritual, we're talking about material success, the best career for yourself, and the most optimal income. I can only speak for myself, but I can tell you that I'm not the only person who's done that. A person who sets aside time every day, and I say that every day, not inconsistently, where you do it a few times here or there, will definitely reach this long-lasting happiness that cannot be achieved by any other means. Now in society, there's a lot of other competing ideas, trends, that are supposedly can give us temporary happiness, but they're just band-aid solutions. It could be a fad of a diet, it could be some kind of a program, detox program for a week, or all kinds of these uh, practices which are not bad at all. But they are just substitutes for talking to the ultimate creator who's the only one who can decide your fate. Anyone who believes in God must believe that they can communicate with God. And a person who does not establish a connection with God is like a person who has a father who does not have a father. It's an orphan. A person who doesn't talk to God is an orphan. And what happens to that person? In most cases, at some point or another, just like myself, they fall to despair, to sadness, to depression, to unhappiness with their lot in life. On the other hand, a person who connects to God who speaks to God, instantly feels that he has a Father in Heaven, someone who only wants to give him good, and has a level of mercy and kindness that is really unlimited. Such a person lives a successful life. It's a life of pleasantness, because he knows that he can talk to God anytime, anywhere, 24 hours a day. Now, there's no such human creature and that, doesn't, that, that can do something like that for you. No one in your family can be there for you every minute of your life. Only God. When you speak to God, you're basically saying that you believe in God. You're saying that you have faith. And faith in this world requires us to go beyond logic, to do something that seems even absurd. Like when I went out there into the forest for six hours, I threw my intellect aside, I put my emotions aside, and I said, I'm going with faith. I'm going with the knowledge that I have that there is God. And if God is there, and if I talk to Him, and I plead with him that I want the right life for myself, that he's going to do it. This is what personal prayer, talking to God, really is about. Now the main way to connect to God is through speech. And this is why personal prayer is so important. Even though we may have God in our thoughts, at different times of the day, at moments of happiness. That's not enough to develop a real deep connection. We have to use the power of speech, of talking, to convey our love and to convey, to convey what we want to achieve in life. 
and to plead with God to help us. Now some of you may already be praying from a prayer book and think that it's the same thing. It's not. Praying from a prayer book is a wonderful thing. I do it every day, a few times a day. But it's totally different. When you pray from a prayer book, you are reading words that are not your own. You are confined to those words. And in many cases, people simply don't have the ability to focus for long periods of time on words that are not their own. Their minds wander from the prayer. They start becoming impatient. They, be, they start wanting to, want it to end. Very few people have the true intent to connect to God through prayer in a prayer book. Now, I can tell you that if you do personal prayer, it will elevate your prayer through a book much more. Now, when you pray with your own words, you're flowing with your heart. You're not restricted. You're in full focus. You're concentrating because you're pleading for your exact needs. It's exactly what you're feeling. You're awake. You're alive. You're engaged. You're there. This is what personal prayer is about. And this is why it's totally different from what we call prescribed prayer, which is from a prescribed text. Now, whereas not many people can be suc successful with prescribed prayer through a book, everybody can be successful in talking to God in your own words. It doesn't matter what your level of IQ is. It doesn't matter how religious and spiritual you are. It doesn't matter whether you've done a lot of wrongs in your life. You could be a prisoner in a jail. You could be a mother of, of two children. You could be anyone. And you can tap into this amazing gift. And God wants to hear your prayers, your real prayers. He wants you to speak to Him truthfully with your own words. And when you do that, unbelievable things can happen. So I said that no spiritual level is necessary. This is not something lofty in the sky. This is something that is really tangible that everyone can experience. So we're going to spend a few moments talking about the process of doing this personal prayer. Some, what are the things that can help you have a better setting for such a prayer? The first step is to find a quiet place with no people where you can feel at home. Now this place could be your, your bedroom, it could be a forest if it's nearby, it could be a street that you walk down on, up and down, it could be your backyard. The whole goal is that you are not bothered by anyone, that you can completely focus on this session with God you don't have your cell phone on with texts and emails. You're there with the master of the world, ready to hear everything, big and small, that you have to share with them. Now, as you become more consistent with your daily meeting with God, you're going to feel very rejuvenated. You're going to have this physical and mental peace when you come out of it you'll feel that you're much more aware of your life purpose now the best time to do personal prayer is actually any time that's convenient for you you can do it in the daytime or the nighttime it doesn't matter the point is to do it now of course consistency in the time that you select is better because it's just like when you decide to go work out. You have a specific time you like to work out. The same thing. If you choose a specific time slot to do this daily session with God, then you won't miss it. Now, if you can't do that, it's okay. The point is to not miss a day. The point is to overcome the battle with your evil inclination that is trying to tell you that what you're doing is absurd, 
that it's not getting you any results, that you're not going to achieve anything, that this is just hocus pocus, or I just simply don't have the time, or I don't have the stamina to do it. It's not true. We spend a lot of time in our day on th things that have no meaningfulness to it. We surf the web, we read articles that don't really impact our life in any way. And we spend hours doing it. Now can't we spend one hour trying to impact our life in a way <clears throat> that is so significant as, as I have described it, that, that affects every element of your life? One hour. Now people would give millions and millions of dollars to attain happiness and to attain all the things that I described. Now you can do that on a daily basis without spending a dollar. All you have to do is give your time. The key is to set aside time and never give up. Now, don't have expectations. Not every session is going to suddenly lead to this unbelievable burst of enlightenment. Results don't come in one session. They are, it's a cumulative practice. Think about it this way. Imagine a business venture where you want to have a, a business that will gross $5 million a year. Can you invest $5 to yield this type of result? Very rarely, almost never. The same goes in the spiritual world. Everything goes according to effort. You want to have million dollar results? You have to put the time in. If you put the time in, you will see those results. It's just like any other project you undertake. When you want to learn a new instrument, a sport, whatever is your passion in life, it takes practice and dogmatic perseverance. You have to do it without skipping a beat. As long as you find yourself arriving at this session, even if you don't have anything to say, even if you spend five, ten minutes trying to think of what you will say, you will find that as you do it more and more, you will find yourself speaking a lot more. Your heart will open. And God willing, may it happen even right in the first session. You have to realize that arriving at this type of session is an unbelievable achievement because anyone who takes it to their heart to want to talk to God, it's someone who is already very far ahead of the game. Very far ahead of the game. And that alone, the fact that you're standing there, is a huge achievement because you've just overcome your evil inclination, whose goal is to bring you down flat out horizontal, it wants you to be down. The evil inclination was given to you by God Himself as a force of opposition. Now this is a very strong opponent. And the only way to overcome it is to enlist the help of God. And when you overcome the evil inclination, you're literally moving mountains in your life. So you don't want to be discouraged by not seeing results at first. You might feel awkward. You might feel like you're not accomplishing goals. But over time, you'll see that suddenly abundance comes from above. You'll start seeing that age-old problems that you've been contending with are slowly starting to unravel. Problems that you have, let's say, with having a bad temper, anger, problems with relationships with certain people are starting to be unwound. You're starting to also see blessings in other areas of your life. You're starting to see positivity in your career and other things. That's why if you keep doing it, you will see those results. Now, if possible, I've found that walking is more conducive to talking than sitting. If you walk around pacing back and forth, you're much more able to talk as opposed to if you're sitting on a chair in your office staring at a computer screen. 
you may just lose your focus. Now, of course, sometimes that's not possible. A few days ago, I had a business, I had a business uh, meeting out of town, two hours away. I ended up doing my personal session in the car, in, in, in the midst of gridlock, and it was okay. The point was to do it. Now, the way this, the, the personal prayer goes is that the first few minutes should be spent as a preparation. You start out, and these are things that you can customize. Now again, I said that you don't need to limit yourself to these tips that I, that, that I give you, but these are very useful. First, one thing that I found to be really good to start with is to just say, thank you God for, for giving me this amazing opportunity to speak to you, that you actually are listening to me, and you're listening to me, my trivial me, and my every problem, my every issue, and that you're actually gonna help me find the solutions for them. Thank you, that's amazing. You have to realize you're standing before the very creator. This is the king. And when you stand in front of the creator, you have this precious moment that you do not want to squander. And you have your father here who loves you and he wants to give you the best. So when you start out in this preparation mode, thinking in your mind about all this and what's, what's really happening here, that you have a meeting with God, you have a meeting that is far more important than meeting, let's say, a head of state or someone who's gonna give you the best business deal of your life. You're meeting with the Creator Himself, and you're able to do it every day. And He's interested in knowing everything that you have to say. It doesn't have to be big or small. Now, to help you have a successful session, pray to God and say, help me find the right things that I should focus on in this session. Help me to speak about my true character flaws and to speak to you with honesty. Help me, God, be able to speak and confess the wrongful acts that I've committed. Help me, God, to just be honest. And help me, God, to get the tools to be able to overcome my problems. When you ask God to show you what you need to be thankful for, what miracles occurred to you in the last 24 hours, this is also very important. A big part of your personal prayer is to also talk about the good things that happened to you in the last 24 hours. Essentially, if you do this on a daily basis, all you have to do is look back to the last 24 hours and talk to God about what happened, what went down in those 24 hours? What are the things that you contended with? What are your achievements? What are your failures? What are the wrong deeds you committed? Wrong thoughts, etc. And then also obviously about big themes in your life, big issues or big, big aspirations that you have that you want God to help you with. One thing that is really important to come into this personal prayer session with is to use your faith. In order to speak to God, you have to have faith. And it must go beyond reason. You have to believe in two main principles when you talk to God. One, that everything that happens to you is from God. Everything. God is the one who envisions the type of life that you should have. God is the one who knows what are your, the best goals for your life. And God is the one who orchestrates all the events in your life in a perfect way to cause you to go down the right path in life. So think about it this way. You get a lawsuit. It's God who sent you the lawsuit. You have debts. It's God who sent you those debts. You, you made a big deal at work. It's God who gave you that deal. 
You found your soulmate. It's God who sent you that soulmate. A friend or a spouse shouted at you. It's God who's shouting at you behind those people. Secondly, you have to accept another important spiritual law, which is that everything that happens, and it comes from God, is for the good. We've talked about it in every class, but these are like the foundations of faith in God. If you don't have those, you have to pray for that, because this is really the essence of belief in God. So you have to believe that everything that happens, whether good and seemingly bad, is truly for your own good. As I said, only God knows your purpose in life. Only God knows which way to steer you. And the problems that come to you in your life are coming as wake-up calls. They're coming there to wake you up in the hopes that you will want to go and fix yourself. And there is no better way than speaking to God and using this session to do this type of self-evaluation, to evaluate these problems and understand the true root of those problems, which is not the problems. It's a message that underlies each problem that you have in your life. And that message, if you understand it, will allow you to have a much better life. We'll get back to that in a second. So, if you don't yet have this amazing, complete faith in God, where you believe that truly everything is for the good, and believe me, nobody starts out like that. This is something that grows with us. You have to begin your session by praying, God, I want to have this faith. I want to really believe that everything that's happening for me is really for the good. I don't believe it right now. There's some things that I really am causing me a lot of pain. But help me get there. Help me find the real reason why these problems are happening to me. Help me in this session understand why is it that these things are happening so that I can become a better human being, so that I can become a better son to you. So now that you've kind of gotten yourself in the mindset where you can really talk to God and you've started out with those introductory prayers to be able to find the right words, to be able to, to speak your heart out, to speak what you really are feeling, and to be honest about it, we come to the next part. The next part is the component of gratitude. Now if you do this every day, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the last 24 hours of your life, and you're going to say, you're going to look at what could happen to you in that day. And you're going to like itemize the main good things that happen. Now you can't go through everything. But you can pick the things that are most meaningful. Now in the beginning, you might have difficulty remembering what happened to you in the last 24 hours. Because you're not really used to t doing this daily accounting. You're not used to being grateful for every hidden miracle that God is putting in your life. And believe me, we have a lot more hidden miracles that are happening in our life than we appreciate. And this daily exercise of speaking to God brings you to an amazing appreciation of just how good your life is. And this is what leads to happiness. So what you do is, you thank God for things like Thank you for this lovely meal that I had with a friend. Or thank you for the deal that I landed. Thank you for the nice conversation I had with my spouse or my kids or, or whoever it is. Thank you for this great job I landed. Or if you can't think of anything, thank God for your functioning organs. I have a functioning lung. I have a functioning heart. I'm able to speak. I'm able to walk. And we all know that some people can't even have that. Now, as you start doing this on a daily basis, exercising your gratitude muscle, you start seeing a lot more little things that really are adding to big things. You start seeing that your life is actually a lot better than it is. You start having this level of optimism 
by the very fact that you have to do this daily accounting of good things that are happening. Now, I also recommend that since we can't recall everything that happens to us in a single day, that when something good happens to you, on the moment, say, thank you, God. I know this is you who gave me that. So that way, if you don't mention it in your session with God later, you've already thanked Him for that. And as you see, saying thank you leads you to happiness. And happiness and joy are at the center of having a relationship with God. God did not create us to be unhappy creatures who are suffering. God wants our good. So clearly, developing happiness is at the core of having a relationship with God. Now, at the same time that we have to thank God for the good, we also have to thank God for the problems and difficulties that are happening to us. This is something we spoke about previously and we have to seem it, thank God for these seemingly bad things. It runs against common sense to do that. But when you talk to God about your daily seemingly bad things and you thank Him for it, you will slowly over time start to realize and believe that those bad things were actually not bad things at all. You'll start understanding why certain problems are happening in your life. And you will start getting to work about fixing the root issues behind them, which a lot of the times are just character flaws that are causing oh. it. Without these problems, you would never even think of re-examining your life. If everything was hunky-dory, you wouldn't make an effort to improve yourself. But if you start thanking God for the bad things and having a level of optimism, then God will send this level of awareness to understand why some things are happening. Just like I had my wake-up call that was a compound of many different issues, if, that, if I didn't have this intersection in my life come upon me, if I didn't have these issues I would have never gone to, and reached out to Rabbi Laser Brody, and I would have never gone to the, to the forest for six hours, and I would have never gone to speak to God on a daily basis. This is why everything that's happening in your life, every problem that you encounter is not random. It's perfectly orchestrated by divine providence to come into your life so that it steers you into the best path in your life. It's for your own good. So for example, someone who is, has issues with anger may have a wife that has, that at the f for no reason, gets upset with him every second. He says a little thing and she, she just goes off. Why is that? It's because in order for that person to understand that they need to work on their level of anger, they need a very exaggerated response by way of an intermediary of God, which could be your spouse, who's got such a level of anger that the only way for you to fix your anger is by having a wife like that that is really a mirror of you. And if she was quiet and submissive, then you may not wake up to actually change yourself. So when you thank God for the bad things, you also avoid focusing on the sadness and negative emotions that cause people to dra get dragged down to even more unhappiness. Sadness begets more sadness. Someone who's sad and depressed is someone who's lacking gratitude. 
Because they're saying to God, basically, that God, you're not doing right by me. You're not doing your job. You're giving me the things that are not right for me, and I know better than you what I need. A person like that is a person who's telling the Creator, who's only giving you good, that they know better. It's selfish, and it lacks gratitude. And what happens to such a person? Such a person, God turns their back on them. A person who complains and who's bitter, God closes the walls of prayer. He says, you want to be sad and complain? I'll give you a hundred more reasons to be sad and complain. Throws more problems in the hopes that maybe after this new bout of problems, they'll wake up and will decide that the only way out of their hole is by actually doing self-evaluation, which is what this whole practice is. They'll start looking at their own character flaws instead of blaming external factors, whether it be your, your parents or whatever, whatever it is. They'll start looking into themselves and taking ownership of their problems. So now, this segment of thanking God for the good and bad is clear. So thanking bad, God for the bad is an example. Thank you for this lawsuit that I got. I don't know yet why I got it, but I certainly hope you'll clarify it to me. Thank you for this sickness I have. Thank you for whatever it may be. Thank you for the difficult the child that is keeping me up at nights. Thank you for all these things. I know that if I persevere, ultimately, I will see the good that comes out of it. Now the next phase of this personal prayer, this session with God, is the very key part. It's the part of self-evaluation. Now during this part, just like the other parts, you look at the last 24 hours and you evaluate your good and bad actions, as well as thoughts you had, whether they're good or bad, and even speech that you used that was good and bad. Now, if you want to see any kind of improvement in your life, you have to be completely honest. You have to be completely honest. Now, how many of us meet people and have really negative judgments of them in our minds? We say, oh man, this guy's an idiot, or this guy is so-and-so, whatever it is. So all these are bad thoughts. We're supposed to judge people favorably. We're supposed to look at the good points in people. These are the kinds of things that you want to say, I'm sorry that I think, I'm sorry that I'm so judgmental, that I'm so arrogant that I think I'm better than everyone else. Now, there's many different actions, and everybody here knows what they are. The problem is that we never get to confess it. And this is an opportunity on a daily basis to do that. And of course, on the flip side, we tell God the good things what we did. So imagine you're working on a character flaw. You have a flaw of having a very bad temper. You say, you know what? Today, three out of the five people I encountered, I encountered them with a smile. I couldn't hold it with the fourth and fifth person, but the first three people that I deal with on a daily basis, that normally I'm rude to, that normally I blow up at, I was nice with them. So that was a good thing. Now, God, I'm sorry about the fourth and fifth person that I did that to, but I help me, God, that tomorrow I'm going to score perfectly on this. Help me. I know I need your help. You can also focus on things, you know, I made my wife happy. I helped her put the kids to bed. I did the shopping, or I listened to a friend and tried to help him out. I, um, 
was less judgmental when I looked at people, etc. The key is to be honest and to ask God to help you avoid doing these wrongs. This self-evaluation that you do enables you to pretty much have a clean slate every day. There is, basically you should realize that there is a heavenly court that is judging you every hour of the day. That's why things happen to us throughout the day are decreed to us by the heavenly courts. Now, if you judge yourself down here by doing this kind of self-evaluation, there is no trial upstairs. It's finished. You've already judged yourself. You've already judged yourself. You've confessed to your, what you did, and you've made a resolve to change yourself. That's it. That's why someone who does this on a daily basis, they're, not, they're sleeping easy. They're not having these stresses and these fears. They don't have a bad conscience. They don't feel guilty. They're at peace. Because they said, I made the best effort today. I scored 85% today. I admitted to what I did wrong. And then they come the next day. But not only that, they're aware of the things that they are vulnerable to. They're aware of it. They're aware. So as a result of that, they're less likely to make the same mistakes. People behave in patterns. And those patterns, unfortunately, repeat over and over. Now, if you start looking at yourself objectively outside yourself in this type of uh, personal session with God, you'll start seeing those patterns. And you'll be able to break them. Because the next time you encounter a situation like that, you're going to say in your mind, I've been working on this so hard, I'm not going to do it. God, help me right now to hold myself from my, from my own nature and not do this. Now we arrive at the peak of your session with God, which is where you should spend probably half the time. Now, I did say an hour is, what, is the optimal but if you can't do that, start with 30 minutes. Now, if you do an hour, you spend 30 minutes in this area. It's an area of self-improvement. What you do is you focus on only one, only one character flaw that you have, only bad habit that you're trying to overcome. Now, we all know what our greatest flaw is. We all know it. So pick that one to work on. And not only that, focus on it, not only in just one session, but it could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months. I personally found myself spending four months on the issue of anger. Because I said, in the spiritual world, just like the physical world, the, the level of return that you get is in accordance to your level of effort. If you want to be someone who is completely peaceful, never gets angry, and takes things in stride, you have to work on it, not for days, for weeks, for months. Now, you may wonder, what can you possibly say to God for four months? 30 minutes a day about the same character flaw. Well, there's a lot to say. However, you should know that the, in this type of practice, you don't have novelties every day. You can find yourself repeating the same words. The whole point is that you're reinforcing again and again what you need to change, and that's done through repetition. So, I'll use the example of anger, on how you go about working on that. First, you ask God to clarify, what is anger? What's wrong with anger? On a deep level, what is wrong with anger itself? Could you show me why it is wrong? Am I really, what's wrong? Because if someone is doing something 
It's clearly because on some level they're justifying this behavior. And the only way to be able to remove any of your character flaws is to admit that they're 100% wrong, they're not acceptable on any level. <coughs> the only way to do that, to be able to, to get this awareness of why something is wrong for you, is to ask God to help you overcome it. We cannot overcome our evil inclination. In fact, our evil inclination gets stronger every day that we become stronger. It becomes a more stronger and stronger opponent. So the only way to defeat your evil inclination is by summoning the help of God. Only God can be the equalizer who defeats the evil inclination. So what do you so God starts clarifying to you what it is? What is anger at the root level? Well, for me, for example, I learned that anger on a deep level is someone who doesn't want to accept what God is giving them in life. They're angry with God himself. They think that the creator of the world doesn't know what they're doing, that God forbid, I know better than God. I'm angry in this situation because I didn't get what I should. I know better how to run the world than God in terms of running my life. <coughs> now, if you have true faith in God, you know that's not true. You know that this argument doesn't make any sense. Now, at the beginning, it may be difficult for you to accept that. But as you keep praying to God to help you cut this behavior, over time, He does. Then, in this 30 minutes, you evaluate your actions. You start looking, okay, the people that I usually get angry with are so-and-so. How did I do with this person today? How did I do with that person? Oh, I didn't express my anger, but in my mind, I certainly was really angry. Okay, so that's not good as well. I'm supposed to not be ex exhibiting any of these character traits, not in speech, not in thought, and not in action. So if on the level of action I did well, great. Now I'm working on the level of thought. God, help me eliminate these bad thoughts so that on all levels, I'm positive. On all levels, I'm removing this trait. Now, everything in life is not a straight line improvement. So you will have ups and downs. You'll have days where you're, you're doing really well you'll have other days that you're not. As long as you confess to God, then you'll always leave feeling complete, feeling good about yourself, and not having this self-persecution in your mind about what you're not doing that is right. Self-persecution is the greatest enemy of man, and the only way to remove this enemy is through this type of session. Self-evaluation and the self-improvement segments of personal prayer are really priceless opportunities to better our lives. This is where we analyze how to overcome all our bad character traits, the shortcomings. We focus on the most urgent issues in our lives. Another type of issue you can focus on it's not necessarily a character flaw. It could be, let's say, you have fallen into deep debts. Or let's say you have a very severe health issue. These are all things that you can spend those 30 minutes on. Because if you spend your time on those things, you'll learn why is it that those things are happening. And by coming to terms with them, and thank, being thankful to God that you have those problems in your life, and by working on trying to make yourself a better individual, you will merit to see those problems go away. I've seen people who've had very deep debts or even illnesses that have like disappeared as a result of having this kind of approach, an approach that is constructive as opposed to complaining about their life, as opposed to having lack of gratitude. They said, I accept it, I know that I can, I, I'm going to improve myself. I'm going to be a better better son to you, God. I'm going to do this. Just show me what I need to do. 
I'm accepting these problems and I'm accepting them happily. When you do that, the problems are no longer problems. They're there, but your relationship to them is completely different. You're not in despair. Every day you wake up saying, I'm going to tackle this problem. I'm going to find a new angle on it. And over time, those problems are deconstructed and they go away. This is what is unbelievable about this session that you can have every day with God, with no intermediaries, as opposed to going to a shrink. You don't need to spend a dollar. You can just go and speak to God and get the exact remedy for all your problems. There is no human being that can ever offer you that. There's no other practice that can ever offer you that. Nothing more direct than being face to face with God. Now, I've given you some different ideas, but you don't have to, you don't have to follow them in this exact way. You can flow with your hour with God. And especially for a newbie, someone starting out, just go with what you feel. You can, you, you can skip parts, you can go around them, as long as you do all of them, in whatever order that feels right. As long as you come to this hour, and as long as you don't listen to your inner voice in the back of your head telling you, don't do this, it's a waste of time, or there's no hope for you, this is not, this is not for you, this is only for holy people, this is, you don't have time. If you overcome all those doubts, you're going to get there. You're going to get to this place where every day is bright, where every day has hope, where you are able to really see what is your purpose in life. You're really able to feel God in a way that you just can't get from praying from a book. You just can't get it from going to an inspiring lecture. Ultimately, you have to get to work. You have to do the work. You cannot sit there expecting for enlightenment. You cannot sit there expecting happiness to turn up on you. The only way to do it is to go to God, speak to God, and if you do that, you don't only achieve your personal redemption, you cause the redemption of everyone around you to happen. And I have seen it. People who practice personal prayer every day cause the people around them to have a much, much better feeling about themselves. Everyone around you is blossoming. It causes other people who are connected to you to improve. So when you do that, you redeem the world around you. So if you benefited from this class, if you actually leave this class saying to yourself, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try this out. And if you do this on a daily basis and it helps you, the best thing you can do is tell your friends about it. Tell your close ones so that they can also better their lives. Because by doing that, you're causing a chain reaction that's going to lead to the true redemption of the entire world. This is how peace comes about. When we all improve ourselves and those around us benefit. Thank you. Yeah.